Hello beautiful people. It's been a little while since we've done a transition tutorial on how to skate transition, different trick tips, and today we're going to be talking all about lip slides. And instead of giving you a list of tricks that you need to know before doing lip slides, we're actually going to walk through all the basics, the fundamentals from the beginning to the end of lip slides. I've been really wanting to get better and more comfortable skating big transitions. So towards the end of this video, hopefully I'll be getting some lip slides on the big transition. But first, let's talk about some of the fundamentals before you start sliding on the a lip. Now this is just going to be my perspective on how to do lip slides. With all skateboarding tricks, there's really no right and wrong way. This is just how I learned this trick and how I progress in this trick. And the first thing that you're gonna want is a skate park or somewhere where you have a lot of different obstacles. You want some small transitions, some big transitions, some steep stuff, some mellow stuff, because really you don't wanna learn this on just one obstacle. It's gonna be one of those tricks that is gonna be a big advantage if you learn it on multiple obstacles. And the first suggestion, the first thing that I actually have for learning this trick, for learning lip sides, is actually learning how to do fakie rocks first, because that trick is gonna allow you to learn how to go into the lip side. So you're sort of figuring out how to land the trick before you even figure out how to get into it. So the first thing that I think you can learn, it's gonna be a big advantage, is just going up fakey and getting used to being on the deck fakey and going back in regular. Learning on something like this size, it's super, super small, it's just gonna build up your confidence because as you can see, my board's actually not even hitting the coping. So this can be really tricky and actually a lot more difficult once you learn how to do this trick. However, it's a good confidence builder, just getting used to that motion of going up and shifting your weight back forward. And with this, I would say, you wanna bend those knees and really scot it. When you get on the deck, you don't wanna get too far. You really wanna aim for the middle and just press back onto that nose. And you don't have to press too hard. Obviously in something like this, there's no real lift. So you're just riding over and just getting used to that stalling fakie motion. Now your goal with the fakie rock is to eventually get to something with coping and it's a lot steeper. As you can see, this core pipe has a lot of steepness to it. It's almost like going to vert and it's pretty small. So what that's gonna do is really kind of make you figure out how not to hang up. It's gonna kind of force you into that position of figuring out how to really use your wheels to lift over the coping with your back trap. So you can either really bonk off the fakie or you can just ride into it by pressing on your nose. Well, since you're rolling up fakie, it would be your tail to just get your board over it and get into that position. You don't really need to focus too much on decking it or where you're gonna be at this point. Really what you wanna do is just get used to getting those wheels down in front of your board and getting the back truck over it. And when you're doing this at first, it's totally fine if you hang up and you know you eventually uh you might take a couple slams but the idea is just to learn how to get your front wheels down on the transition because as soon as they're down on the transition you can use your nose and lift over the coping so that you don't hang up now the other thing with a fakie rock is like i said over time you do kind of want to get further back and the point for this is that your wheels are already closer to the transition so you have less of that kind of quick hang up factor because when you're doing a fakie rock and you just barely get it up there and try to put it back in, you have no time to get your front wheels down and lift your back truck up. What's happening is it's just all too fast and you're probably bashing that back truck. So really, the farther back that you get, the quicker your wheels are on the transition, so the sooner that you can actually lift into the transition and go over the coping, and there's just less hang up factor. Now, the last point that I'm gonna make with the fakie rock is that you can start to go over spines and that might be really good, whether you wanna go up fakie and go back in fakie the other way or just coming up regular, kind of getting your board on and then going back in. This is gonna help with lip sides in the long run because the whole objective here is learning how to get into the transition without hitting that back truck. So now we got some fakie rocks going on. We're building up some confidence. Now it's about how do you get into the disaster. And this is sort of a hack, a cheater way to get into a front side disaster. And now it's really hard for me. In the past, it was really easy to learn this way. And what that is, is doing a kick turn but instead of on your back truck, like you normally do a kick turn, you're doing it on your front truck and you're bringing it up to disaster. And then from there, it's just a fake your rock in. And the point here is just get confident get comfortable with that turning into it and then going back in motion. But uh, essentially you just wanna put all your weight on your nose 
kind of be light with your back foot, dig your shoulder into the transition and press on your nose. And then you just churn that back truck up into disaster. And this could be kind of harder. So if it's working against you, not with you, then you can go straight to learning disaster. But just quickly wanted to talk about this because I do think it's a good way to learning the motion of a front side disaster. However, backside, it's actually really scary to go on your nose and into it. That's, that's more of an actual gnarly pop. So next we'll talk about the actual front side and back side disaster before we get into talking about the slides. Whenever you're trying this trick, I think it's also important to think about the obstacle you're trying on. So this little bank back here is really good. If you're not comfortable with coping yet, and you're just not super confident with going back in and the banks without any coping, those little things, the obstacles that you're trying it on are definitely gonna help with building your confidence. Something that's important to think about when you're doing disaster, front side or back side, is using your shoulders as basically your axle, similar to your board. So your front shoulder, you really want to drop it down and you're just kind of diving into it. Same with your head. Your head is sort of your skateboard and your shoulders are your trucks. We'll use that analogy. Your front shoulder, you really want to dig it in. Your head, you want to be pinching. And then your back shoulder, you want to lift up. So essentially you're using your back shoulder to lift up and kind of bring the weight of the board around. But your front shoulder is what's churning it and giving it all of its direction. And the other thing that really helps with this is approaching the ramp in an alley-oop position. What that means is if I was normally gonna go front side for front side disaster, I actually roll up more into a backside position and churn into the front side disaster or backside disaster, depending on which way you're going. A thing that you can do if you're not confident in getting into disaster front side or backside is actually airing out of the deck or airing out of some transition and just doing a 180 and just having a lot of speed knowing that you're going to land on the deck you're going to air out of it kind of like a kicker ramp and the idea is here it's going to help you figure out those shoulder motions of where you need to turn and how you need to turn front side and back side so that when you do go into disaster and you have the right speed you're sort of used to the motion now there are a lot of different ways to do disasters you can sort of go off the lip and air into it. You can ollie into it. You can grab into it. There's so many different ways. One of the first ways that I think get confident and helped me learning them is just going off the coping. And using pull coping is gonna be a big advantage because it's gonna kick you out onto the deck where you don't have to ollie so much. And it's more in a scooping motion versus an ollie. Now, once you get to this size of transition, it is smart to learn how to ollie into it from low to high. Because at this point, if you're airing into it, it's gonna be a lot harder to slide unless you really draw it out. What I mean by that is you're airing maybe over here and then you're landing into the lip slide way over here, where if you ollie into it, it's a little bit easier when it's bigger because you can go straight into the slide and not worry about having to come down into disaster, into lip slide. Earlier, I mentioned finding the right obstacle is gonna be a big advantage. So something like this where it's nice and steep, there's a lot of almost vert right here. It's not super big though. And you have this pull coping, all that's gonna work to your favor when you're doing disasters. And the point there is that a lot of it is in that scoop. So you're scooping off that into disaster using the alley-oop method it really does help you because you can lock it in. And a lot of times when I say lock it in, it's basically cross-locking. So your front wheels are sort of hitting the coping, your back wheels are hitting the deck. And that way you're not sliding. You can kind of almost shift your body back into regular forward motion before you go back in. And once you have all the other tips down, like once you're confident with going in to the coping, it won't be such a big deal once you figure this out because you can really stall it out get comfortable with it and learn how to bail, learn how to fall from this point. All right, now that we got disasters nice and comfortable, it's about getting into the slide. And from here, the main difference is that you don't actually want to lock, you don't want to cross lock or get stuck in your position. You really do 
want to try to ride right on sort of that front area of your board and something that really helps with lip sides is definitely rails you can do lip sides without rails i'll say it's a it's almost an advantage in a way without rails because there's less tension with rails you do have to balance the slide a little bit more so that alley-oop method is going to be really helpful for getting into disasters but however when it comes to the slide, you don't want to out the oop really because you don't want to cross like that. It's going to keep you from sliding. It's all about finding the balance. And with that, it really is about how you approach it. So like I was saying before, you kind of want to draw it out really wide to get into the slide versus a disaster where you're kind of doing the alley-oop. It's almost the opposite. You want to go really wide. So instead of kind of coming up straight at it like that, you want to come at a very gradual angle so that when you do get into it, you're gonna start sliding right away versus just stalling. And then once you're into that slide, it's about finding that nice pinch spot to hold it until you're ready to go back in. Now something that many people don't really know about lip sides unless you're already confident with them is that there is a pinch spot or a lock spot and what that is or where that is is kind of right here having your wheels drag along the coping as you're sliding having that front foot right on your nose really allows you to kind of pull the trigger when you want now obviously your shoulders have a lot to do with that if you're overturned then you're going to do that or if you're underturned you're going to do that so really once your shoulders are in the right place and you're sliding this is like the right sliding spot for backside and lip side in my opinion because right here is where you can really just hold it and guide it and kind of aim where you want to go in the other thing with going in is that you can use this to your advantage you kind of put your wheels down and you're almost doing like a little bit of a power slide as you come out of it this will especially help when you get to bigger transition because if it's steep you kind of grab some of that transition and work your way out of it versus just coming straight in which you still can do but the point is when you're sliding it to be up kind of towards that front truck is going to be a big advantage when it comes to coming back in and aiming your slide for how long you want to slide now when it comes to the actual slide a lot of it is your footing position you want to have that foot and your nice concave tail area here's where i keep my foot right there and then you want to have your front foot right over that front bolt area not too far back but enough to really stabilize the board and the point is this that you're kind of doing a 180 into the coping ideally without ollie because if you ollie a lot of times it's harder to get into the lip slide in the right position so if you could kind of just visualize going off a curve and scooping 180 without actually ollieing, that's the motion to get into the slide like a total hypocrite right now just trying to get a lip slide on this big transition to sort of like progress with you throughout this video but uh i'm about to faint right now i haven't eaten at all today i've only had water so yeah it's time to go like make the smoothie get some food i don't really fast till 11 and yeah that's working against me today but hopefully you found some of these little tips and different things helpful for your transition skateboarding um i know there's like a lot more i probably did leave out but these are just things i was thinking about recently so yeah make sure you smash that like button if you did enjoy this video subscribe if you're not already and uh we'll see you guys next time mash